In this video, I will give you three reasons why V-Ray is one of the most flexible render engines on the market. For this, we will discover global and localized environment overrides, find out various material override options and tweak object properties, including trace sets. So we're gonna require some testing scene to show you all of these tricks and features. And I decided to use this scene here as a foundation. However, this scene is still a little bit too complex to show you exactly what is happening. So I decided to simplify this scene down here a little bit. However, you can find the tutorial of the scene here in my channel. And as usual, you can always download all of my scene files from my Patreon together with also a whole course on car rendering and lots of other additional goodies. On a quick side note, I'm happy to tell you that Chaos decided to support viewers of my channel by offering an exclusive 20% discount on your V-Ray license. So you can get this by visiting this link down here or by scanning this QR code. By doing this, you will be forwarded to an exclusive area on the Chaos website where once again, you can verify that you can get 20% off your V-Ray license. And if you scroll down, you should be able to see the discounted prices in here. So if you take this offer, you can save yourself 20% and also support my channel by doing so. Just mind that this offer is temporary, so just verify that the offer still exists at the time you stumble upon this video in here. And now let's go back to the content. So this one right here would be the simplified version of the scene. And I replaced the ship with these simple dummy objects in here. And those will help me to demonstrate you exactly what I want to show you in this video tutorial. So here on the left hand side, we have a fully reflective sphere. In the center, we have a fully refractive sphere. And then here on the right hand side, we have a sphere with a medium gray material here applied to it. Then also this very saturated model of a duck. So at the moment, everything seems to be working quite nicely together, but that's not because it comes like this out of the box, but because we are able to use environment overrides in order to tweak our image to look exactly the way we want. So right now you can see how the same scene here looks like without using environment overrides. You can see this doesn't really look so nice anymore and also doesn't seem to be working so nicely together. For example, here the reflections, I would say, are way too dark to correlate with the sky here in the background. And also overall, the amount of bounce light, for example, looks way too dark for my taste. But luckily, using V-Ray environment overrides, we're able to fix that. So right now, it's basically set up that we have here a simple environment map. I just use a procedural V-Ray sky here and I like the way how the sky here looks in the background. However, it doesn't really look nice in terms of how much GI it's emitting in the scene, how it looks in the reflections and so on. And you can see at the moment, if I enable and disable this, it's basically affecting all elements of my scene. And as I said, I like how it looks here in the background, but I don't really like how it affects here my 3D objects. So luckily in V-Ray, if we go into the render settings, we're able to basically split this up. So we have here our environment, which is set up in here, but in the environment overrides that you can find here in the render settings, for example, we can override the reflection and refraction environment. So let's enable this. At the moment, it's overwritten here with this black color. And you can see everything looks the same apart from the reflections and refractions, which now became completely black. So instead of using this simple color, of course, it's much better to use some actual map. That's what I prepared here already in my material editor. So I basically just took the same texture that I use here for the background and just applied some additional color adjustments here in front of it. And now if I take this and pipe this into my reflection and refraction override, you can see that now my reflections and refractions look already much nicer because I basically boosted the intensity of the sky in the reflections. And now whatever I see here in the sphere reflecting kind of correlates much nicer to what we're seeing here in the background, even though that's not physically correct, but visually it just looks much nicer. And that's the great thing about V-Ray that we are able to always control our picture exactly the way we want. So now we can do a very similar thing here for our global illumination because for my taste, this here looks way too dark. So let's make an GI environment override. And I have a very similar map here prepared to previously. I just changed the colors here again slightly. And then I instance that here in my GI environment. You can see that now here our global illumination is much brighter. And for me, this feels here much nicer. 
And like this, we're able to basically add direct our picture exactly how we want. You can see we also have the option to have a separate refraction environment. So if I enable this, you can see that my reflections still look how they did previously, but the refractions now become completely black. And I have here a third texture map that I prepared, which are gonna be using for our refraction environment. And now basically whatever I see in the refractions also looks exactly the way I want. You can see if I wanted to, I could tweak this here completely and make it completely physically incorrect. But I just want to show you that this is all possible and you can basically tweak all of those different elements here without messing with the rest of your scene. So these simple environment overrides are one of my most favorite features in V-Ray because it allows me to move away from just being physically accurate because that doesn't necessarily always look beautiful or doesn't really create exactly the picture that I want to create. And it allows me to basically add direct the picture exactly the way that I want to create. So right now we talked about global environment overrides which affect all of our objects and all of our shaders in the scene. But V-Ray also gives you the additional option to have localized environment overrides based on shaders. So this is an awesome feature which at least to my knowledge no other render engine is providing and something that's specific to V-Ray. But if you have other information please let me know in the comments, I would really like to know. So let's see how this works. We can pick the material here for this ball for example. We have this kind of reflective material in here and if we scroll all the way down here to this map sections you can find this environment slot in here. So here we're able to just define a specific environment which only applies to this shader. So let's add a V-Ray bitmap for instance and let's choose here this HDRI. Let me open this. And you can see at the moment everything is black and that has two reasons. One is that I would need to change here the mapping type from 3ds Max Standard to Spherical because that's a Spherical HDRI. And you can see something already starts to show up but it's extremely dark and that's because this scene here requires very high exposure values. So let's bump up here the overall multiplier to something like let's say 75 for example. And once I do this, you can see that now the sky here starts to appear in this sphere. You can then rotate, for example, the sky a little bit. Let's rotate that 180 degrees. You can see now the sun moved here to the left side, for example. And you can see that we have our own custom environment now only for this specific sphere or all the objects that basically have the same shader here applied to. And this is really an awesome feature. You can even have additional control about this by choosing here in the reflection tab of your shader this dim distance parameters. So let's enable that and you can see that now we can see a little bit more of the ground from our HDRI environment. And the way this works is that basically it's blending your actual scene environment with the override environment that we have set up here in our shader. And it's doing that based on the distance. So you can move, for example, distance here closer to the sphere. Let's choose, for example, three meters. And you can see that now, basically, it's already starting to blend earlier. Let's make that even closer, for example, one meter. And now this dark part that you have here in the sphere is the real reflection of the ocean around it. And then it's starting to transition into our custom environment. In order to not have this ugly sharp line in here, you can use this dim fall of parameters. Let's increase that all the way up to one. And then you have a smooth transition, as you can see, between our real scene environment and our override environment. We can move this back a little bit, for example, something like five meters. You can see that now there's a very nice and smooth transition happening here in this sphere. So this really gives you a lot of options and a lot of flexibility to customize your environment based on each shader. And this can really help you a lot for specific needs in different kinds of situations. So now after having discussed various options to override our environment, either globally or based on each shader, let's check how we can override our materials. And here we have our reflective sphere, for example, we have our ocean, which is reflecting in that. 
And let's say I don't really like the way how this ocean here reflects in the sphere. Then I'm able to make a override here. So let's just pick the material for the ocean. Let's just apply a simple V-Ray override material here. And now we have this ocean here as our base material. You can see everything looks exactly the same how it did before because we haven't really defined any materials in here yet. So we can, for example, define how this material here affects the GI, how it's seen in reflections and refractions. So let's work on the reflections here. For example, we can easily put a V-Ray light material in here. Let's boost, for example, here the intensity. And you can see that now if I switch this one here to a red color, that now wherever our ocean would be reflected, it is now replaced by this V-Ray light material. So you can see here in our sphere, which is reflecting the ocean, we only have this kind of red color in here. It doesn't really affect the refractions. So in the refractions, we basically still refract our base ocean, but the reflections now have been changed. You can see even the reflections where the ocean is reflecting itself, it's replaced. And I think that's a great thing. So instead of using this light material, let's use here our ocean as a copy. And then inside here, we can then, for example, change some settings. So maybe in this case, for example, if we want to brighten up the ocean in the reflections, we could easily just go in and basically brighten that up, reduce the saturation a little bit. So that just what we see here in the reflections just matches nicer to the actual ocean that we see here in the foreground. And you are able to basically do these kind of adjustments and tweaks. If you want to see how it looks basically without this override, you can just disable this checkbox in here and then it's using the original material here again. And now if I enable this checkbox again, you can just switch back and forth between those overrides. So right now we only have this brighter version of the ocean affecting our reflections. But if we want to, we can also affect our refractions by just taking the same material here and for example, instancing that in the refract material, you can see that now also the refractions would be affected. In my case, in this scene, I think I don't really need that. I want to keep the darker ocean here for the refractions and then the brighter ocean here for the reflections. So you can see there's even additional options here in the override material, how for example, the GI is being affected and even how the material here treats or shadows. So I think that's really a great way to fine tune your scene and basically have a lot of flexibility on how your shaders affect your scene. So additionally, there's also the option to override properties based on each object. And there's two options for that. So if you right click, for example, the duck in here, let's choose the object properties. And those are the standard 3ds Max options. And all of those are fully supported. So for example, we can choose to not make the duck here visible in the reflections and refractions. And once I enable this, you will see that it disappears here and here. Everything that basically has to do with the reflections and refractions of the duck now. And that's a great option to customize your scenes to your liking if you need that. But other than that, those standard 3ds Max options in here, you also have the V-Ray properties for each object. And here you have a lot of additional controls. So here you have additional options. For example, you can treat the reflections and the refractions separately. You can have the duck only appear in reflections, but make it disappear in refractions if you want to. So you just have this additional control in here. Also, what is interesting is that you have options here for global illuminations. For example, you can define how this duck here or this object here is treating GI. So you can say, for example, it should generate much more GI if you want to increase the amount of orange here on the sphere. For example, let's increase that to four, close it and then restart the rendering. And you will see that then now here on the sphere, there's a lot more of this orange light appearing because now the duck is emitting a lot more bounce light into the scene. And this makes the sphere here appear much more orange. Now let's switch that back to the default value of one. 
And all of the other options here are kind of self-explaining in my opinion, but I want to focus now at something that's specific to V-Ray also, and that are the trace sets. So for this, let's close this one in here and let's pick the material of this sphere, which is this one here. Let's also apply that to the second sphere. And you can see now we have a reflection here of this third sphere here in both of them. So now let's say we want to customize our reflection. Let's say we like the reflection in this sphere here, but we don't want to have it in this sphere. So using the standard options, for example, to just have this object here not appearing in the reflections basically would disable it in both of the spheres. So it's just a global switch to turn it on or off. But luckily in V-Ray using trace sets, you have the option to basically define that on an object level. So in this case, we will select the sphere where we don't really want to have the reflection of this sphere. And let's use the reflection exclude option. Then we can choose to exclude here the sphere, which we don't want on this object. And let's close that. And we have to restart the rendering. And now you can see that we have a reflection of this object here on the right hand side but it's missing on the sphere here on the left hand side. So using trace sets is an awesome option to basically further customize your scene and basically do things which are completely impossible in reality or in many other renderers. So there you have it, all of those options and others make V-Ray one of the, if not the most flexible render engine on the market. And basically it allows you to create and output anything that you want without really being bound by too many restrictions like in other render engines. If you watch this video until here, chances are that you also enjoy the content that I provide over on my Patreon where you can get access to all of my scene files and additionally a whole course on car rendering and lots of other additional goodies. So check that out if that's interesting for you. Otherwise, see you next tutorial. Take care and see you soon.